Another hot and steamy night in Saskatoon. Perfect uh, time to come inside in the uh, climate-controlled environment of SaskTel Centre, take in some Canadian Elite Basketball League action as the Saskatchewan Rattlers get set to entertain the Ottawa Blackjacks. First ever visit to the Bridge City for the Blackjacks. Good evening, everyone. This is Rattlers Tip-Off, presented by IKS Live. My name is Ryan Flaherty, and yes, Ottawa has been in the league now in its third season, the very first expansion team after the original six. But due to a variety of circumstances, the Blackjacks have never visited Saskatoon until tonight. Of course, 2020, their first season in the league, that was played in a bubble out in St. Catharines, Ontario. And last season in the shortened 14-game schedule, the team's only meeting happened in Ottawa. They've already met once this season. It was in the nation's capital just over a week ago. It was a very rough night for the Rattlers. In fact, a very lopsided defeat, 101 to 50 was the final in that game in favor of Ottawa. Rattlers looking to avenge that defeat here tonight, split the season series and improve their position as they look towards the home stretch and the playoff race. Before we tell you more about tonight's game, however, let's take a quick look back at what happened right here on this very floor on Tuesday night as the Hamilton Honey Badgers were in town and it was a close game, but ultimately a victory for the Honey Badgers who sweep the two game season series. They won by 21 in Hamilton early this year. It was an 81-74 final against the Rattlers. Rattlers actually shot the ball better than Hamilton did, but look at those bottom two numbers right there, the steals and the turnovers, both owned by the Honey Badgers. The, they managed to take the ball away 12 times the Rattlers turning the ball over 15 times, including 10 times in the first half alone. Despite that, they were right in it, right into the Elam ending, but the Honey Badgers just making a couple more shots down the stretch to pull out the win. So the Rattlers fall below the 500 mark at seven and eight, and we will show you the standings in a little bit. But first, here's some reaction from that loss to Hamilton, starting with head coach Dean Demopoulos, and followed by maybe a little bit of a more pragmatic uh, outlook from Tony Carr. Yeah, we weren't good enough to win tonight, and they were. Um, we just weren't um, not pleased with, with the way we're passing, catching the ball. And uh, defensively, we struggle at times. Um, uh, and close isn't close enough, you know, in this type of competition. We need to win basketball games. At the end of the day, man, we are brothers. We spend time with each other off the court. We put a lot of work in off the court and on the court. Things are going to happen. Everything's not going to be perfect. So when you hit adversity, I feel like that's when it shows how tight you are with your group. And this is a tight group. We never point fingers or get down on each other. We just try to pick each other up. So the more we can continue doing that and take care of the ball, we'll be better off. So, yes, you heard it there. Uh, the Rattlers not being uh, divided at all by their recent funk. They've now lost four straight games after a four-game winning streak. It started with that three-game road trip. But the last two games, the last two losses, They've played a lot better and they've been encouraged by some of the things they were able to do despite coming out on the losing end, both against the Newfoundland Growlers and then against Hamilton. And Tony Carr, once again, speaking after the game against Hamilton, he's still looking at the positives and saying there's a lot of good things they can take away from the way they played the last couple games. People who know basketball know sometimes it's not always about winning or losing. It's about gelling at the right time. I think the last two games we didn't come out in the winner's category but we had positive things to take from the game. So I feel like we could just hone on them, hold on things we need to do better, going on into the last five games of the season, and we'll be fine. Indeed, five games remaining. So they're at the three-quarter mark right now, 15 in, five to go. Rattlers sitting at seven and eight, and it is time to make some hay. Of course, the playoffs are coming up soon, and they want to improve their position here down the stretch. Let's take a look at those standings, and we've added a little wrinkle to the standings here tonight to give you an idea of where the playoff picture is shaping up. Now, you can see Hamilton and Ottawa, both in yellow there. That's because Ottawa, as the hosts of championship weekend, they get an automatic berth into the final four. So their record doesn't really matter. Of course, they want to win as many games as possible heading into championship weekend. But even though they're sitting in eighth, they will be at the final four regardless as the host team. So that means that Niagara and Fraser Valley right now are sitting in the spots that would earn them buys to the quarterfinals. Four, five, six, and seven, that's Scarborough, Edmonton, Guelph, and the Rattlers would play in play-in games if the season were to end right now. Of course, the Rattlers, they want 
to finish a little higher than that. At the very least, they would like to host one of those playing games, potentially still earn a spot in the quarterfinals and save themselves one extra game to get to championship weekend. And two of their remaining five games are against the Guelph Nighthawks, so you can see right there, have the same record at seven and eight. The other remaining games for the Rattlers include Scarborough, a trip to Montreal, and they will also take on, of course, Ottawa here tonight. So that's where the standings are standing right now. A little repetition there for you. We're going to take our first break, however, and uh, when we come back, I'll be joined by one of the Rattlers who's going to play a central role here tonight after this break. You're watching Rattlers Tip-Off presented by IKS Live. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Welcome back inside the Snake Pit. Doors just open. Fans are just starting to make their way into the building as the Rattlers get set to take on the Ottawa Blackjacks here. First ever visit by Ottawa to Saskatoon uh, since they joined the league in 2020. And uh, joining me now is a man who has been playing a role for this Rattlers team all season long, the big man, Jordy Chimanga. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I guess, first of all, just, you know, this is your first year in the league and your first, obviously your first year with the Rattlers. Uh, how has the experience been for you, even just aside from the basketball? What's it been like for you? Oh, it's been definitely interesting and different, I would say. You know, it's not what I expected it to be. But I came out here and uh, got really fell in love with the city. And people out here have been welcoming me. And me and my teammates have been great ever since. Yeah, you're from Montreal, a little bit bigger city uh, than Saskatoon. But, uh, yeah, what's that, that transition been like, I guess, coming out, coming out west? Pretty good. You know, uh, for, mo for most of my life, I've been in a... Uh, back over in the States playing in college and high school and all that stuff. So coming back to Canada has been a really great experience for me. Uh, I was I read something interesting uh, on your bio that you actually didn't start playing basketball until you were 15 years old, correct? Was, right. So you're a football player first and then made yeah. the switch? Played a bit of football, uh, yeah. Why'd you switch? And uh, and, and I guess you seem to take take to basketball pretty well. Yeah, I just uh, I felt like it was a better opportunity for me to to continue with that in that route. And uh, made the, the, the transition when I came over here to the States. My, my brother took me under his wing and uh, kind of fell in love with it over that summer. You know, it was a tough summer to go through. That changed my whole body. And uh, it was really tough to do, but, you know, kind of persevered through it. And then my family was there to support me. So that helped me to, keep, uh, to prevail and be here today. Well, and, and I know your dad played pro pro ball too, right? How much of, a, of a, an influence was he then for, for you? Yeah, yeah, he played and uh, he also he also coached a little bit. You know, co uh, coached boys and girls, so it's uh, it's been good. He always had a, a little bit of feedback to, to give, so it's always good to have that. You know, I'm jumping around a little bit here because I, I meant to ask you about being here in Saskatchewan. You got to attend a powwow yesterday, the Saskatoon Tribal Council powwow. Saw some video. You guys were having a good time, mm -hmm. dancing a little bit. I, I wish we had the video to share here. But if you haven't seen it, check it out there on the Rattlers' uh, social media accounts. But just overall, like, what kind of an experience was that like for you to sort of take in an event like that? It was really good, a really good experience. You know, I was, I came in there with an open mind, as everybody should, you know, introduce new, new cultures. And uh, it was good to just to just see it live. You know, I've never been a part of it, so to be there, you know, I kind of fit in love with the rhythm of the, the drums and everything else, you know, the voices, it was, it was amazing. Right on, right on. Well, uh, I also know that when you were in college, uh, you were a, a very good student as well as a basketball player. How important was that for you and is that for you, uh, you know, the studies as well as the basketball, especially when you're looking ahead to your, you know, your post-basketball life? No, it's very important, you know, academics is a, is a, is a pretty huge deal in my, in my family and, uh, you know, I have to... I had to go in there in college and pick something that I, I love to do. You know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to just go in there and pick something just to study it. I wanted to study something that was valuable to me, and then you know I got I got the best out of it. So what were you? What did you study in? in uh, psychology. Psychology. All right. So are you getting in the heads of your opponents? Does that help you at all on the court? <laughs> trying to get in yours right now. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Hey, uh, I also know, you know, you you had a, a familiar face on this team uh, join you 
with the Rattlers and Malik Ben Levy. You guys played G League together. Uh, That's my brother I talked right to him. Yeah, I was going to ask about that bond. Like he's spoken about that bond that you guys have. What's that like to between the two of you and, and to, to come from one team together to, to this team? It was great because uh, I came I came with the Iowa Wolves a little late. I got traded there, so when I got there, you know, he was the probably the most energetic guy that was that was there, welcoming me with open arms as, as far as the other teams well. And uh, it was just great. We started creating a bond from there. And then uh, when I heard he was coming and joining his team, I was like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll come and join too. Perfect. That always helps uh, Barry Rollick, right? When he's a guy who can help uh, sell it to, to the other guys, right? Definitely. Uh, I mentioned you're from Montreal. Uh, there's a team in Montreal now, and you haven't been there yet, but you're going there in a couple of weeks for so, a game. How much are you looking forward to that? How much have you had that one circled on the schedule? Uh, not pretty much circle, you know, it's, uh, every game Every game is, is another opportunity to, to learn to get better and, and, to, and just compete. So I'm looking forward to that match for sure. But, uh, you know, more looking forward to be back in my city. You got a lot of friends and family hitting you up for tickets? <laughs> I'll take care of that. <laughs> I'll take well, care hey, that. Uh, just before I let you go, I want to just quickly ask you about the game tonight. The fact you guys obviously are having a bit of a slump here. Um, mm -hmm. What's the key to, to snapping the skid here and, and getting a win against Ottawa tonight? The main key is stay together and, and most, mostly have fun. I don't know if we have if, if we had fun. You know, losing doesn't make doesn't make things fun. But you know, trying to find back that rhythm and have fun and stay together. And I think that's those two mango points right there is a big is a big part of the recipe. And there's a bit of a marquee matchup between you and another big uh, in Chad Posthumus. Uh, you guys are second and third in rebounding here in the league. Do you game plan for specific guys like that, or is it about what you're doing on the court? It's pretty much just box out to get the rebound. <laughs> you got to get the rebound. You know, it's a, it's a big fella right there. You know, he's averaging about. 10, 9, so it makes a difference. So you got to box them out. Got to work them. Got to That's box right. them out. Absolutely. All right. Well, Jordy, good luck tonight with that with that assignment, and good luck uh, hopefully snapping the skid here tonight I appreciate and uh, down the stretch. Yes, sir. Thank All right. You. That is Jordy Shimanga of the Saskatchewan Rattlers, averaging nearly 8.5 rebounds a game this season. That's third in the CEBL. He's been a big presence inside all season long for the Snakes, and the Rattlers are going to need more of that output from him if they're going to have some success here down the stretch. All right, let's take a look at another one of the Rattlers that are going to, is going to be in the spotlight here tonight, and it's one of the newest members of the team, Michael Nuga. Now, he just made his Rattlers debut on Tuesday night. Now, you see those minutes at the bottom, or the numbers at the bottom, they're not going to jump off the page at you. Nine minutes of action, five points, a rebound, an assist. But it was the energy that he brought off the bench. He hit a big three-pointer. He really kind of sparked a rally for the Rattlers. It ultimately fell just a bit short, but the uh, impact he had off the bench, especially in the wake of the departure of Sebastian Aris, who really was that, uh, that big piece off the bench for Saskatchewan, a nice spot for him. And uh, after the game, uh, both head coach Dean Demopoulos and uh, star point guard Tony Carr had a lot of good things to say about their new teammate. He earned the time. He went out there and changed the complexion of the game. Played, um, played in a, um, uh, a teammate, a good teammate fashion. Okay, he didn't try to do too much. He took the things that were there for him. He didn't try to show anybody anything other than hustle, trying to play real good defense. He didn't turn the ball over, and uh, he made the proper plays when given the opportunity. So good for him. He'd been waiting for his opportunity. He got it and he made the most of it. He was a great boost off the bench. And I think that was a win for us tonight. Even though we lost, we see we got another guy that can come in and change the tempo of the game. So there you go. Uh, you know, glowing praise really from both head coach Dean Demopoulos and uh, Tony Carr about Michael Nuga. Now Nuga has been here for uh, at least a month. He joined the team back in June, uh, but just was biding his time, also recovering from an ACL injury that sidelined him all of last season. He suffered that injury in February of last year, and then ultimately uh, was tra transferred. He changed schools from Kent State to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and he will make his debut with the Running Rebels coming up this season after sitting out a uh, transfer year, a redshirt year with the uh, UNLV Running Rebels. But uh, Nuga, waiting for his opportunity, finally got his opportunity in that game against uh, the Hamilton Honey Badgers and definitely had an impact. So it'll be interesting to see how he is deployed here tonight as a member of the Rattlers and see how much he gets used against the Ottawa Blackjacks, who have some pretty good dynamic players of their own. Should be a really good matchup. Also, should mention a new addition to the Rattlers roster here tonight, and that is... Uh, a new international player, of course, the new rule this season in the CEBL with one international roster spot per team. 
with Sebastian Eris being released earlier this week to attend to a personal matter. That left that slot open, and the Rattlers uh, GM, Barry Rollick, fortunate to have someone on uh, speed dial, I guess. Anton Gadafors, uh, just uh, the, the, the signing was just made official a couple of hours ago. Coming over from Sweden, he has played professional basketball in Europe for over a decade, including uh, most of the last seven seasons in the Swedish Basketball League. Uh, big man who can shoot the ball as well. I was watching him a little bit earlier in warm-ups, hitting a lot of three-pointers, uh, and we'll see if he gets a chance to see the floor here tonight, but certainly could be an important piece down the stretch for the Rattlers to add to that depth as they look to make their playoff push. So keep an eye on him, and I have word that there will be another player joining the team shortly as well, perhaps later this week, however, there's nothing official on that yet, so cannot give you any more information than that. But stay tuned for another player signing to this team here later this week. All right, let us take another break here. And on the other side, I believe I will be joined by a member of the Blackjacks. I see him moving his way over to the set. So we'll have him joining us in just mere moments. You're watching Rattlers Tip Off, presented by IKS Live. Welcome back to the Snake Pit. We're just about 45 minutes or so away from tip-off here between the Saskatchewan Rattlers and the Ottawa Blackjacks. Rattlers still stinging from a 51-point loss against these Blackjacks just eight nights ago in the nation's capital. And you know they're going to be hungry for a little vengeance tonight. One of the guys who's going to try to keep them from getting that payback is the man standing next to me right now. Uh, he's known to Rattlers fans. He was part of the inaugural season. It's Chad Posthumus. Welcome back to Saskatoon. Yeah, really excited to be here. Like you said earlier, it's the first time Ottawa's been here. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, first game out here in Saskatoon. Yeah, well, uh, I, I want to get to that in a moment. But first of all, as I've been doing, I've been catching up with some of the former Rattlers this season. We had one of your former teammates, Alex Campbell, here earlier. And just uh, wanted to ask just sort of your memories of that 2019 year and, and specifically the group, uh, the, the team that you had here in Saskatoon. I don't want to make too many comparisons too soon, but we have a team here I have in Ottawa. It's a very similar team. Everyone's really cohesive, got along really well that year. Um, it's, it's weird that you don't have a fight or an argument on the team ever, but we were, uh, everybody got along, had a great time on and off the court. And when we were on the court, we fought with each other and obviously ended up in the championship. So, yeah. So that's always a, some good memory. Anytime you win together, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Those are great memories. Uh, well, Ottawa, and you've been in Ottawa now for a couple of years, a couple of seasons here. Yep. Uh, it seems to be a pretty good fit for you. How's it, how's it working out? It's been going great so far. We had some early struggles this season, but uh, but as you guys uh, found out the other week, uh, we're putting it together. So one, I think, four of our last six games. Had a close one last night. A couple uh, couple questionable calls, I think, there. And uh, they were... Got to, got to give it to them. They were hitting some crazy shots, but uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're putting it together down the stretch. Really excited, and uh, yeah, here well, we that, are. That, that's that's what everyone says, right? You want to be playing your best at the the most important time of the year, yeah. right? So, but you touched on it. You had a coaching change. It was early in the season. Yeah. And and then after that change, the results maybe weren't there quite yet, right? It was you still lost a few games. I think it was a one in seven before you. Yeah. As you mentioned, four of the last six games. So what's I guess been the key, what's been the impact I guess of that coaching change? I think it's just been uh, different styles, different ways that certain guys that you have um, work with coaches, right? Um, not saying either one's better or worse, but just there are, like you said, some some learning curves getting the new coach in, um, and I think everyone's bought into what he's been providing us. Um, James is awesome. He's a it's a great guy. Him and I go way back, and not only that, he's he's a great coach. And as you can see by the record, the last little while, it's it's working out. So yeah, that'll be James Ruin now, the head coach of the uh, Ottawa Blackjacks. Well, I was talking to your uh, fellow uh, big man counterpart here just a few minutes ago, in Jordy yep. Chimanga. Uh, this is kind of a marquee matchup uh, for those of us kind of looking at this game. You know, second in rebounding, he's third in rebounding. Yeah. Uh, when you look at a game like this, and uh, do, when you look at your opposition. Do you look at the opposing big? Do you game plan for him? Or is it about 
your game? Like, how do you approach that? Personally, me, I love playing against other big guys. I, I struggle somewhat playing against uh, the new way, I guess, the league is playing with smaller forwards and even guards at big positions sometimes. So, uh, yeah, we're really excited for the matchup tonight, myself and Zanis. So looking forward to it. It's going to be, be a great night for us. Uh, all right, so you're on a bit of a roll. You're going... You don't have to worry about your record, though, because you no. guys are in championship weekend. Now, I mean, I know that can go one of, you know, different ways, right? That's a bit yeah. of a double-edged sword. Now, what's your approach, uh, or what's the team's approach, knowing that, you know, the record doesn't matter, but obviously you still want to be playing good basketball? We want to win as many games as we can. We want to be one of those teams that's guaranteed a spot, regardless of our guaranteed spot. Um, and I think we're going we're gonna to put up a good stretch here at the end and put ourselves in that top four position coming into uh, championship weekend. The other uh, side of that is you get to potentially play a little spoiler as well with some teams yeah. that are trying to move up the rankings and that sort of thing. A game like that tonight is a perfect case in point. Do you relish that kind of role as well? We're not worried about anyone else but ourselves. We're going to win. We're going to put ourselves in the best position with the most wins at the end of the season to uh, be successful and go into that weekend feeling good about ourselves. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I know you got a big one here tonight. This Rattlers team, obviously, between the loss last week and the yep. losing streak they're having, they've, they're going to give you a lot to handle, so it should be a real good game. Yeah, good luck we're tonight excited. Uh, Thank you so and the much. rest of the season, and uh, well, maybe we'll see you in Ottawa. Awesome. Appreciate you having me. Thank All you. Right. That is Chad Poshimus of the Ottawa Blackjacks. He will be in action here on this court tonight as the Blackjacks take on the Saskatchewan Rattlers. And yes, uh, fan favorite here in 2019 with the Rattlers, Chad Poshman has a championship ring from that Rattlers team. All right, let's take a look at one of Chad's teammates who is a guy the Rattlers defense will certainly be watching closely when he is on the court. That is Walt Lemon Jr. He's all business, <laughs> judging by that photo, but... 6'2 guard out of Chicago, a uh, veteran pro, as you can see there, eight years as a professional basketball player, averaging over 18 points a game and just under six assists. In fact, he is second in the CEBL to the Rattlers' Tony Carr in that department. So to the top two ball distributors in the CEBL in action here, going head-to-head -head here tonight. And Walt Lemon Jr., in addition to the numbers you see there, he's also shooting 53%, which is an impressive number for a guard when you consider where they take a lot of their shots from. The fact that he is shooting over 50% and averaging over 18 points a game, something to behold. In fact, he is uh, attempted, and, and he's not attempting uh, you know, three or four shots. He's had double-digit field goal attempts in all but one game this season. So really speaks to his shooting prowess, and the Rattlers would certainly have to be ready for him. Walt Lemon Jr., nearly 300 games of professional experience now touched on it with chad posthumous touched on it earlier with jordy as well this is a rematch of a game that took place last week and it was a one-sided affair with ottawa rolling up a 101 to 50 victory and here are some of the numbers from that game and it was certainly not pretty for the snakes there you have it the field goal percentage the rattlers did manage to shoot 40 percent from three but they didn't take a lot of threes the blackjacks sort of kept them off the line forced them to take different shots. The rebounds were fairly close, but that turnover number again, those are just glaring. 23 turnovers is a season high in that game. And look at the points from turnovers, 32 for Ottawa. Basically a third of their scoring came off of Rattler's turnovers. And turnovers has been the watchword all season long for head coach Dean Demopoulos and his bunch. They need to clean that up if they hope to get a better result here tonight against the Ottawa Blackjacks. All right, time for one last break. And then, time for one more guest, so please do stick around. Rattlers tip-off, we'll be right back. You're watching it here, presented by IKS Live. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca.
Welcome back inside the Snake Pit, Saskatchewan Rattlers and Swish getting ready to entertain the Ottawa Blackjacks. Blackjacks first ever trip here to the Bridge City and the Rattlers looking for a split of the season series. Looking to get back to the 500 mark as well with just five games remaining in the regular season. And I'm joined now by someone who's uh, worn a couple different hats for this team over the years. Uh, a new role for Raul Garcia this year. Hey, man, thanks for hey, being here. Yeah, I was just so happy to be invited. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, maybe, maybe nagging me a little bit to get on the show. I, I've but only I did asked put the offer games. out first, so. Yeah. It, it was it was a, it was me first. So uh, yes, you were first. You were initially you were the comms. You did the director of ops. I can't remember the exact yep, title. Yep. Now you're the you're the guy handing out t-shirts and doing the contest and doing the in-game hosting. So different uh, perspective uh, this year. What's it been like uh, the new role? Yeah, it's been great. You know, it's, I, I just couldn't get enough. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been here since the beginning, and I couldn't do uh, couldn't go through a season without being involved in some way. So super excited that the Rattlers had me back and uh, and having a lot of fun. Uh, got to interact with fans and and get them going, and uh, I feel so powerful when they start cheering. It's, it's great. <laughs> it is. I, I've had the privilege to do it a couple times for a different sport, and, uh, yeah, it, it is, you get a little power mad with yeah. it a little bit. Uh, you mentioned it. Obviously, you, you're just kind of doing it, but you're also with, the, obviously, the U.S. Huskies, Husky Athletics. Um, I always forget because you have such a long title, but uh, I call it Sports Information Director and leave it at that, but I know there's more to it. Yeah, we, we can go with that. That's, the, <laughs> that's about the, the gist of it, yeah. <laughs> The firefighter. He's the yeah. Husky Athletics firefighter right here. Uh, but there's obviously that connection between U Sports and the CEBL, and you've kind of seen it from both sides. I'm just curious of how, how, how you've seen that, that relationship uh, evolve, I guess, since 2019. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, uh, you know, when people would ask me when I first started this in, in the role with the Rattlers, what my favorite part of the league was, uh, and obviously it was the Canadian contingent, but I really love that U Sports factor because, you know, how many professional leagues can you go as a as an athlete, uh, a university athlete, and play professionally and get that experience in the off season, and then still retain your eligibility. Uh, so it, it's it's such a, a fun little thing that the CBL does that uh, that I think has such a lasting impact because now we're seeing these athletes. You know, we see Lloyd Pandy, who's who's phenomenal, and then we'll we'll shoot lights out for Carlton, uh, and and do the same at, at at the professional level. And it's a, it's just a really great benchmark and and something that. I think the the partnership's so lucrative for for both parties. The, per, the progression's been really interesting too, because I think in year one you didn't see a lot of the U Sports guys get a lot of minutes. Yeah. Now we're seeing guys in their second and third years in the league, and they're getting those elevated roles. I'm thinking of even with the Rattlers with Anthony Tikakili, like last year yeah. with Fraser Valley, he just played a little bit, but he's continued to get more minutes as the season's gone on, and it really shows that these U Sports guys are capable exactly. of making that yeah. move. Uh, okay, in in game host, you got a lot of things, a lot of balls you're juggling, all the kinds. What's your favorite uh, promotion uh, here? At oh, Rattlers I, games? I, I I love giving out the free T-shirts. I think that's that gets me the most excited. Uh, but honestly, it, it, everything's so much fun. Just getting the crowd into it coming out of elam time or or uh, out of a timeout uh the crowds here are phenomenal uh, you know they've always have been since since 2019 so uh being able to to interact with them more directly than i was before is is a lot of fun and what are your impressions of this year's rattlers team oh man they're they're so much fun to watch they're you know and i said this to to brad earlier and uh you know the the talent level in this league keeps going up exponentially each year and each year you think well that's probably you know this is probably where we're going to be at but then it takes another massive step forward the next year. Uh, so it's such an exciting time to, to be involved with the league because, you know, what's it going to look like in a year from now? Well, uh, and the last one for you is just, you know, we talk about the fans, the environment. You've obviously been here for a playoff atmosphere, for a championship weekend and a championship victory. Rattlers have a little bit of work to do if they're going to earn a home playoff uh, date here, but they're certainly not out of that picture whatsoever. But you can speak to it. What's the playoff atmosphere in the Snake Pit like? Oh, it's absolutely electric. Yeah, it's, it, nothing beats it. You know, it's, it's loud. You can't hear yourself think almost. But, uh, you know, these guys deserve it. This team deserves it. So the more people we can get in here, and, and especially if we get a playoff game going here, uh, it's just going to add to that atmosphere. There's, there's no atmosphere like the Snake Pit, that's for sure. And with you leading the, way, leading the charge on the mic, I mean, it just gives it a little extra juice, too. Uh, Want to stick around? We'll do tonight's matchup. Absolutely. Keys to the game. All right, fantastic. Rell is going to hang out here. We're going to look at tonight's matchup with these here Ottawa Blackjacks. And I don't want to hammer on it too much, but again, it was a lopsided loss eight nights ago. There you see the numbers right now between the two teams. Uh, Ottawa with a little bit of an edge, both in terms of their scoring and their point prevention, but pretty close margins there. The head-to-head -head wins actually surprised me when I looked this up, although, of course, the Rattlers with back-to-back one-win seasons, but uh, I don't know, guess, is there anything there that jumps out at you? 
Yeah, you know, uh, the, the head headwinds, I think you kind of nailed it, jumps out for sure. And uh, I, I, I don't want to guarantee anything at all, but I feel confident tonight. All I, right. I, I, I'm, feeling, uh, I'm feeling a Rattlers W tonight. Well, it's certainly uh, they, they need one here tonight. So uh, let's see what they can do perhaps to get one. Let's talk about the keys to the game. And uh, the first key, well, it's a pretty basic basketball fundamental, but it's one that's kind of plagued the Rattlers here this season, and that is taking care of the basketball, a.k.a. protecting Dwayne Johnson, uh, the Rock, protecting the Rock. And, you know, I mentioned it, the season-high 23 turnovers for the Rattlers last time against Ottawa. It's been a focal point all season long. I know you don't necessarily get to watch every minute of every game, but have you noticed any, like, any theme to this when, when it comes to the turnover story for this team? Yeah, you know, not particularly that I've noticed. I think uh, maybe I'm just too optimistic about the team. I just I just noticed the positives. Uh, I think, you know, keeping the ball moving is going to be crucial. And keeping bodies moving on the offensive side is going to be crucial to uh, to limit those turnovers. Yeah, absolutely. Dean, Dean Demopoulos, not just putting it on the guys passing the ball, but also the guys catching the ball. He said we need to pass and catch the ball better. Uh, it's a fundamental thing, but it's important, and it's a key number one. Key number two, uh, we talked about it here on the show, is the battle of the bigs. This is a marquee matchup tonight between Jordy Chimanga and Chad Posthumus. Uh, what do you think about this matchup? Well, I mean, exciting to have Chad back in the house. Obviously, uh, part of that, a key part of that 2019 uh, championship roster. But, you know, Jordy's no slouch. He's, he's played extremely well this season and has been really well at, at, at shutting down and locking down uh, opposing big men. So... Uh, definitely a, a very exciting matchup to, to to check out tonight. And you know, Chimanga, I think with a little extra incentive, he's coming off. Uh, you know, he didn't play a lot last game. He was he was had a little foul trouble, just the five boards, no points. The first time he's been held off the scoreboard this season. So you know, he'll be hungry to redeem himself a little bit tonight. So it should be a great battle. And finally, uh, even though I've been talking about it a lot tonight, the Rattlers' third key is to have a short memory. Yes, they lost by 51 to Ottawa eight days ago. But they need to forget about that and focus on executing their game plan here tonight. Throw that one out the window. They've already looked at the film. Well, maybe they didn't look at the film from that one. I don't know. But uh, that is key number three. Just a uh, final thought. What are you uh, are hoping to see here tonight? What are you expecting to see, Roel? Just open for a Rattlers W. That's, that's all I want. Mr. Positive, Mr. Optimistic, always looking for that W. Rel, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, thanks so much. All Appreciate right. It. It's, uh, he's going to be in the stands. He's going to be giving away T-shirts, all kinds of good stuff. He's... Uh, keeping the energy going here in the building all season long. Uh, we're glad to have him on board. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. All right. That is Raul Garcia, and that is our show. Uh, once again, uh, you can check out everything that's happening uh, on the rat with the Rattlers, excuse me, or around the CEBL by taking a look at their social media accounts. There's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I talked about the powwow the Rattlers went to yesterday. There's some great footage of them taking that one in uh, and enjoying themselves at that. And, of course, lots of basketball highlights from practice, from games, uh, and some fun stuff as well uh, if you check out those social media feeds. And, uh, of course, our last show, yes, our last edition for now, although we are... You know, hoping there's going to be a playoff edition of Rattlers Tip-Off as well. But for now, our last episode will come to you one week from tonight. That is July 21st when the Guelph Nighthawks come to town as the uh, Rattlers haven't played them yet this season. In fact, they will play them twice down the stretch with the final home game of the regular season coming here a week from tonight against Guelph. Rattlers Tip-Off will come your way one hour prior to tip-off at 6.30 on the Rattlers Facebook and YouTube pages. So... That is the next time you can catch this show. For now, get settled in for this game. Should be a great one between two teams hungry for a win. Rattlers and Blackjacks coming up at the bottom of the hour. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the game, everyone. This has been Rattlers Tip-Off, presented by IKS Live. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca.